Vestibular dysfunction is when the animal has a problem with its equilibrium or balance. We all have 12 cranial nerves that innervate everything from the neck up. Cranial nerve number eight is called the vestibular cochlear nerve. That nerve has two functions. The vestibular component is your balance, your equilibrium, and then the cochlear portion is hearing. You have one on the right, left side and one on the right side. As far as the vestibular component of that nerve goes, as long as they're both equal working normally, you're balanced, you're symmetrical. I'm going to go through some of the signs that you can see when an animal has vestibular dysfunction. I'm going to remind you that this is not a, a all or nothing list. So sometimes you may just have one of these signs, sometimes you may have all of these signs. The clinical signs you can see when an animal has vestibular dysfunction can be a head tilt. Most of the time you're going to tilt towards the side of where the problem is. So a left side at head tilt most of the time is going to be indicative of a problem with the left side of the vestibular system. The other things you can see can be ataxia, which means lack of a balance or lack of an axis, essentially being drunk. This can be in varying degrees of severity. The severity of your ataxia does not indicate the severity of what's causing the vestibular dysfunction. You can also have a nystagmus, which is a rapid involuntary motion of the eyes. The eyes may go in a horizontal plane, a vertical plane, or a rotary plane. Sometimes you see the nystagmus when the animal's just sitting there looking at you. You'll see the eyes flickering back and forth. Sometimes you can even see it in the eyebrows. During an exam, we will often roll your animal on their back. And what we're doing is trying to challenge the equilibrium to see if we can induce that nystagmus. If we see nystagmus, it's abnormal. If we see that, it tells us there's a problem with the vestibular system. The vestibular system originates in the brain stem, and a branch of that nerve runs to the inner ear. When your animal has a vestibular dysfunction, the problem can be either in the brain stem or in the inner ear. The reason we call it vestibular dysfunction versus vestibular disease is because vestibular disease makes it sound like there's one thing that causes all of these signs, and there's not. During the exam, often what we'll try to do is try to localize. Can we tell if your animal's problem is central or in the brain, or is your animal's problem in the inner ear, which we call peripheral vestibular dysfunction? Different things happen in different compartments. In the brain, some things that can cause a central vestibular dysfunction can be anything from a stroke, tumor, something inflammatory, hemorrhage, trauma, things that can happen Peripherally, out in the inner ear, can be anything from a middle or inner ear inflammation, tumor, or sometimes it can be idiopathic, also called old dog or old cat vestibular dysfunction. During the examination, we'll be looking at your animal to see if we can find any hints that the problem is in the brain versus in the inner ear. Sometimes we can localize that the problem is definitively a central problem or brain problem. Sometimes we can't. If there are no other clinical signs, often we'll lean towards a peripheral problem, but we can't 100% rule out that there's not a brain lesion. Vestibular dysfunction is one of those neurological conditions that I'll often say you can't judge a book by the cover. Sometimes those animals that are most severely affected may have a very benign underlying cause, such as old dog or idiopathic vestibular dysfunction, and that dog may be normal in a week or two. Other cases, the signs may be very subtle, and it may be the tip of the iceberg. A good neurologic examination can help you make decisions on what the best next steps are for your animal. A neurologist is always going to pick an MR scan. It's the gold standard. It's the best modality that we can uh, use to evaluate the animal's full brain as well as the inner and middle ear. CT scan is a great imaging modality for inner and middle ear disease. However, the ability to evaluate the brain stem is less than adequate. Is there any blood work that can determine the cause of your animal's vestibular dysfunction? Unfortunately, the answer to that is no. How do we treat vestibular dysfunction? The answer to that comes back a little bit to what was the underlying cause. If your animal has idiopathic or old dog vestibular dysfunction, it really is just supportive care and time. The supportive care can be helping get your animal up and outside to urinate or defecate, keeping them clean and dry, and making sure that they're eating and drinking. 
Sometimes this requires some anti-nausea medications or even some appetite stimulants um, while they're rehabbing. What is the prognosis for your dog if idiopathic vestibular dysfunction is not the final diagnosis? That is a conversation that you will have with your veterinary neurologist depending on what the findings were on your workup. If your animal has severe vestibular dysfunction and workup is not an option, I often recommend give it a tincture of time. Start with a week. If during that first week you feel like you're not seeing any improvements or worse, you're seeing a decline, quality of life may have to be considered. However, in cases of idiopathic or old dog vestibular dysfunction, some of those animals can be very severely affected and in a week to two weeks, almost back to normal. So I often encourage owners to at least give a week and see where we are. If your dog has an abnormal episode or event, what can be super helpful for your veterinarian to try to figure out what that event was is a video. A picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million. When taking a video of your pet, stand back, put your pet on the ground, and make sure that there is nobody in the field of view of the video. If you're able to see if your pet will stand up and walk, having a video of how your animal's trying to get up, how they're mobilizing, can be super helpful.